This is the honey we brought in in one day, about four days ago. Nathan's here to extract today. Uh, we've had it in here for about four days because we want to dry it out. We have that dehumidifier there over the floor drain that runs 24-7. Um, we live in a very humid environment. I think it's really smart to try to dry our honey a bit before we extract it. We even go so far as to leave a little bit of it on tap. We like pulling it when it's maybe one-third on tap because that's the part that gets uh, affected the most. And then when you extract that on cap portion that's very dry, blends with the cap portion, you end up with something about 16, maybe 17 percent. We like it thick like that. I think it gives the honey better character. The customers prefer it too. Um, it's been raining for three days straight here. It's been very humid outside. So we've only been able to achieve about 30 percent humidity in the room. Usually if we're not in a rainy spell, uh, we get it down about 20, 22, sometimes 25 percent. The room is about 91 and a half degrees there. When we move these supers into the other room, they'll cool down a bit. Uh, I don't like to on-cap things at a real high temperature because we have a lot of virgin comb in here. In other words, brand new comb that's never been run through the system yet. Uh, threw out a lot of foundation. And if it's real warm, that will peel the, the comb off the foundation when it goes through the on-capping knives. I see several boxes here that have some brand new combs in them. Anyway, we like to have it in here for three to four days. Uh, we'll extract today. We're going out to get some more today. This room will hold about 2,000 supers if we really stuff it. It's not very common that we have it that full because we're constantly cycling things in and out. Uh, usually we'll have a few hundred in here during the extracting and honey pulling season. We're right in the middle of our spring honey pull. Uh, I've been showing it in our videos. It's dark honey, but it's really good. I think the customers are really going to like it. So we'll go out and get some more today. This yard's about a half mile south of our shop, and uh, we also have a small yard at our shop. And when we extract supers, we put them on a trailer and bring them to this yard to let the bees rob them out. We don't want any of that spring honey residue left in the supers when we put them on the colonies for sourwood. It doesn't take much of that tulip poplar and that honeydew and that darker stuff to really influence the sourwood. We want it completely robbed out. And for about the next 10 days to two weeks, these bees will rob until the sourwood starts. So we'll, for the most part, be able to get all our supers cleaned out before we put them on for sourwood. Looks like the bees are done. There's not much traffic over there. Yesterday it was crazy. And today there's very little traffic, so I think they've got it cleaned up. We'll pick it up and put out another round. I'm sure someone will question the wisdom of this. It's just something I feel we need to do. Not only do we do it before the sourwood, but when we're completely done making honey for the season, we uh, clean up all our supers before we put them in the cooler for the winter. I don't like putting away wet supers. They get a little bit mildewy. They just don't stay nice. I think it's much better to get them clean and dry. Now, another way to do this, if you just have a few colonies, is to put your supers above an inner cover and they'll go up and clean the supers out and bring uh, the little residue down into the brood nest provided there's not a nectar flow. So that's one way of doing it without literally setting them out for a bee yard to rob them like we do here. And as you might well guess, this yard doesn't need to be fed at the end of the season because they actually get pretty heavy off of robbing this trailer little update on our cell building yard. Everything's going well. We usually have three or four cell builders going at one time and the rest just get a honey super in the meantime. Cycling them through. We'll use them once, skip one or two cycles and then use them again. So out of all the colonies in here they get a break for a few weeks at least before they have to build cells again. We're getting very good take still this season. At some point when the dearth begins the take will go down and quality might not be as good either, but right now everything is very good. 
Our little nuke mating yard that we established right beside the cell building yard did well. This is where many of our 48 hour queen cells went a month ago. Uh, I showed that in a video. Had a very, very good take here. It's pretty obvious to me that all of these 48 hour cells are being accepted and finished because the queens are all identical. I don't think any of these nukes made their own. I think all cells were accepted and finished. So this is the basswood tree I showed in a couple videos ago. It's come and gone and the bees made nothing. It's already over. It should be wide open right now. Traditionally on this date, I think it's the 29th today, right John? 29th of June, this uh, should be flowing and even for another week. But it's come and gone, it's over. We got nothing from it. <laughs> Okay. What's that? The pink stuff? The pink stuff. I don't know. There's a lot of it here. Some down at the other end of the yard too. The bees are working it. I don't know what it is. I've been seeing a lot of that this year on the Have sides you? of the roads. Oh, you don't want to... Okay, we just pulled the honey off of all of these. We're ready for about two weeks until the sourwood starts. And some of them are real good, some of them are fair, some of them are really full of bees. Eh, not too far. Okay. That's a load of honey going to the shop right there. So we're going to go on to some more yards this afternoon and uh, put on a bunch of escapes. We're, we're near Otto, North Carolina. We're having an unusual season, like a very unusual actually. We were here a week ago and we put a fresh sacrificial super on, which we always do just before the sourwood starts to catch any remnants of the spring flow. And these bees have filled them up in seven days with uh, mountain mint. I've been keeping bees in this location for about 25 years and I've only made mountain mint three times and this year is one of them. Um, they've really been piling it in. I don't consider mountain mint all that great. Some people like it. It's just interesting how some flows come only once in a while and you don't see them much. Again, I've only seen a good mountain mint flow about three times in 25 years. So we're lifting it up again. <laughs> Seth, could you drop that super right here? Thank you. Putting the escape right back on. So this whole super is on capped. And I wouldn't dare do that. Except for we got that warming drying room back at the shop. So we can put that on capped honey in there and dry it out in just three or four days. Oh, what's that one look like? Yeah. They're putting it in. Yeah, good colonies. Probably put 20 pounds of honey in there, mountain mint. So the good news is they're making honey. The bad news is it's not sourwood. Let's hope they switch over. I'm really getting a little pessimistic at this point. We've got a lot of yards that we've checked in the last week. And so far, I've only seen one yard that I can confidently say is making quantities of sourwood honey. And all the yards south of here should 
have started already. They typically start around the 4th of July. It's blooming. The blooms are not profuse this year. It's very obvious that only about half the trees are blooming. Uh, it just doesn't feel like a great sourwood year so far. I see a few trees on the hills, but it's not the quantity that we usually see. The trees that are blooming look okay. I can't say that the blooms look bad, but I just, I just don't have a real warm and fuzzy feeling about the sourwood crop this year. Maybe a week from this, from today, I'll be singing a different tune. I hope so, but yeah. right now I think we're making all this other stuff. Some of the other yards are making crimson or uh, Dutch white clover, mountain mint here. Down around Clayton, we were tasting something we didn't even know what it was. Honestly, I'd never tasted it before. Everything but sour. Everything Most but sour. Pretty wide open. You know, there's other stuff. Just, yeah. Yeah. The bees are good. It's not a problem. I mean, we're we are making honey. It's just not sourwood. I'm in Otto, North Carolina, and this lady makes her living raising alpacas. There are a bunch over in the barn there, and she has an upper pasture up there where she keeps some of them. They're very curious animals, but that's really not what I want to ask you about. You got this garden, obviously. You got this ancient cabin, which is a log cabin under there. Yes, sir. And then the house that was built in, what, 20s, 30s? 30s. 30s. This really is a typical Appalachian farmstead here. But what I'm really curious about, and there's the goats up there, that's a chicken coop. You got everything a little farmstead would want. These bees are literally 30 feet from where you work, walk, drive, run your tractor, everything else. And uh, I've always been a little nervous about that. And you've always told me that it's not a problem. Do you ever get stung? I got stung once after you had worked them. Yeah. I learned a lesson I didn't know. Yeah. I went to the barn for something and bam. And that was it. Yeah, when we've been here, that's a good time not yeah. to, you know, yeah. go working close to them. Other than that, I've never had an issue. Yeah. Well, I it's a wonderful spot. We feel blessed to have it. Now the bees do nicely here. Yeah. Another thing I feel very lucky about this yard is that it's so secure. You have to come up a long gravel road and then into her driveway and there will never be any vandalism or anything like that here. No, and I think that having the dogs helps for oh, yeah. any kind of predators away. Yeah, well we have the electric fence in there more for the goats than we do the bears because I know your dogs <laughs> will keep the bears out of here. Yeah. Anyway, you have a lovely piece of property. Okay. This really is just a typical old-fashioned Appalachian, yes. Southern Appalachian uh, and farm here. Underneath the new coating on the outside of the logs are square cut wormy chestnut logs. I remember walking in there, the ceiling's really low, Very like it low. used to be 150 years mm -hmm. ago. So that's the real deal right yeah. there. It's just covered up with, uh, to protect it. with siding to protect the old cabin. But there's a very, do you know what year that thing is? They figured probably late 1800s. Late 1800s, yeah. It's a cool cabin, it's the real thing. Anyway, very nice. What's growing down there? Uh, I mean, they look like little apples. What is it? Those are all crab apples. Crab apples. And uh, I collect them, and I make crab apple jelly, which okay. is really good. Yeah. But the deer have decided that they like it when they're fermented best. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> they they enjoy that the best. Yeah. But um, well, it looks like they got pollinated well. <laughs> they, they did. They really did this year. It's been exceptional. Last year there wasn't so many. But I've lost a couple. I, they age out. Yeah, I saw so, that, yeah. But that's okay. You got a nice crop of Dutch white clover, too, there. And the, the bees love that stuff, too. We're hoping the bees switch to sourwood. In fact, there's a sourwood tree right there, mm -hmm. actually. We've not seen any sourwood honey yet. The bees are making mountain mint, a little bit of Dutch white clover, and some other odds I've and ends. I've never heard of mountain mint. That sounds it, good. Well, it, it, no, it's not, actually. No? In 30 years of beekeeping in this area, I've only made mountain mint honey three times. And it's surprisingly less than mediocre. You'd think mountain really? mint, oh, that's going to be wonderful. And you can taste the mint in it, but mm -hmm. it's just, it's not anything you'd want to put on your table. Oh. 
interesting. And a lot of people think, you know, all honey's good, and it's not no, true. No, you it's really you that a while ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have your, your uh, rhododendrons have been blooming over on mm -hmm. the edge of the driveway, but for some reason the bees didn't work the rhododendrons this year. They, I've left the thistle. They love this blue weed, purple top thing. Yeah, they do like that, yeah. And, uh, but they just have been helping. Yeah. Do you notice a difference in your garden with the bees here? Yes, very much so. So uh, she came into the store and offered this spot to us, which is very common now. Oh. People ask, how do I get bee yards? And we don't have to work too hard for them anymore. Oh, nice, because I saw you put one down at the beginning of the road, too. Oh, did you see that one? Yeah, yeah I saw it. I Melissa's. came in the other day. I went, ooh, they're back. Well, you know, we used to have those there years ago, and then they were feeding the cows in front of the gate, and we couldn't get in and out. Right. And now her nephew is mm -hmm. gone. And there's a new man leasing the pasture, so oh, okay. he's doing a better job. We can actually get in and out of the gate now. <laughs> so, well, anyway, th thanks for the interview. I appreciate the spot, and you'll be getting some uh, fresh honey here within a month or so Yay! when we when we extract this I, stuff. I have to tell you, I hoard it. I don't let anybody have it. It's oh. just Ellie and me. <laughs> no, no. You let me know when you're out. We'll keep you supplied. No problem we're there. We're all very happy with it. <laughs> right. Thanks a lot. See you Thank later. You. you guys have a good day. Thank you. The biggest challenge with this bee yard is keeping these goats out of there. Sometimes we let our guard down, we set the gate down on the ground, the electric wires, and we'll be working in the yard and the goats will be up on the beehives inside checking us out, checking the hives out, checking the trucks out. They're very curious animals. They're actually really cool, but we gotta be so careful not to let them out. I don't wanna chase goats around the mountains. Hey, hey. okay, Meadowbrook Road, next. Meadowbrook uh, Plain, whatever they call it over there. <laughs>